Hello there, and welcome to another Gifography tutorial. Dun, dun, dun. One day I'll have my own theme music, but today is not that day. So today we're going to be using the crossfade method uh, to create a cinemagraph, and these work best for running water or steam um, or anything really that is flowing. So for this particular one, we're going to be using uh, coffee, and I actually shot this and we had the hardest time actually getting the coffee to steam. So we took a vaporizer, put it underneath the slats, <laughs> and it worked. Like surprise, surprise, but you know, gif hack. First thing you wanna do is import your video. Da -da 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 -da. Slow computer. Okay, and so a lot of people use a screenshot from the video to make their masking layer, but what I like to do is take a photo for the masking layer, and that will usually yield a higher quality um, for your masking layer, which is, you know, presentation wise, much more desirable. So first thing, I wanna make sure oops, that you're approximately the same size because your video layer will probably be smaller than your photo layer. So you copy and paste this. And so you wanna make sure that it's outside the video layer. because if it's inside the video layer, it's all gonna be on one line. And obviously that's not what you want. So make sure that they are the same duration because if they're not, it's just gonna awkwardly, yeah. See how that works. So make sure, same duration. When you go in, and this can get tricky, especially if yours doesn't line up perfectly initially and you're gonna have to kind of fudge it but you know do your best and since we're animating the steam really all that you want is to make sure that this area right here matches up so there you go next thing you want to do is go here create a new layer and this is going to determine uh, where you're masking things out so you can see the animation come through. So layer three, go to our little paintbrush. Go. So what we wanna do is animate this little buddy right here. Oh, oh, forgot to mention, you're gonna wanna take your masking layer off so you know where the actual animation is gonna be. That would be a good thing to do. <laughs> so here you go. Paint over that really nice. It doesn't have to be perfect. Unless you're a stickler for that, in which case you can go frame by frame and do it that way, whatever you wanna do. And so for me, um, when especially with steam and stuff like that, at the top it kind of peters out. So I like to down my opacity so it has a fun little gradient kind of effect right there. And that'll add a little bit more dimension to with everything. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's all kind of about trial and error, deciding what you like looks, what looks best for you and all that good stuff. I will tell you that this portion will probably be your most time consuming you want to make sure you're going slow and everything's covered. Okay, so once you have that done, 
Put the visibility back on to your masking layer and take your painted layer, make that invisible. And then make sure you have your mask layer selected and you're going to press command and this is on a Mac. So I think it's control on PCs, but don't quote me on that, sorry. But you're gonna press command and then click on that layer. And that will select the area where you painted. And then you're gonna come down to this little button right here. And you're gonna say add layer mask. So from here you want to hit command door control and then the I key as in the letter I and that will inverse it so that your animation is showing through on the correct part you can see here your only portions that are animated are that and you see there's a little bit extra right on here so if you need to clean up go to your little paintbrush buddy and just paint that on as well. So there we go, check and make sure it's looking good. It's a little bit right there. Yeah, so that's looking pretty dang good. So from here, what you wanna do is this is where the crossfade comes in. You're gonna select your video layer you want to go to approximately the middle and you're going to press control or the right mouse button and you want to go to split clip and then you're going to take your second clip bring it to the front and then you go to this little button right here your transition and you're gonna to go to cross fade. And the duration I usually started out at 10, but you can change it. And then you drag that to here. And again, also make sure that these are adjusted. Also at this point, you can delete this layer because you're not gonna need that anymore. So, from here, look at that. So you can see the transition and this works especially best for steam because it's just a constant flowing thing and it doesn't really make a difference whatsoever and again at this point adjust as needed because I'm a perfectionist so I'll be cleaning this up for a while <laughs> Actually, this is usually where I bust out Criminal Minds and alternate between this and then listening to, you know, about serial killers and all that good stuff. Shout out to all the Matthew Gray Googler fans out there. Raise them up. Cool. So from here, you want to make sure that everything's kind of cropped because your layers are not going to be perfect so you can see like right here you want to come in and crop it a little so it doesn't look so funky boom okay so here's the difference between what most people tell you to do and then what i'm gonna tell you to do from here you want to go to, again, I have Photoshop, Creative Cloud, so things might be in different sections, but if you do have this one, it has definitely changed from the last, because this one you have to go to export, and this is where your safer web is going to be, and also your render video. Um, so I know it's different in the previous Photoshop, but for this one, it's all under export. So from here, you go to export, render video. 
name it whatever you want to. I'm gonna call it Steamy. Steamy Final. So I can discern it from everything else. Wait for that to export. Do we do? Again, the rendering and all this stuff is usually what takes so long. Unless you're a perfectionist and it's literally gonna take you forever to do your masking layer. Cool, so from here, go to File, Import, Video Frames to Layers. I do it this way specifically because it takes forever if you're trying to save the full thing as a GIF immediately. So this is kind of an easy time saver way to do this. So let's see. Go here. What I name it, Steamy. Go down to the, haha, -ha, Steamy. So select it, hit open. When this screen pops up, I typically like to go to every two frames because that's gonna reduce the amount of frames that you have to deal with, which again, takes up the most space. Cool. So from here, you can see how many frames that you have for this. Oh my gosh, 55. That's not too bad, not too bad. From here, this is where I like to adjust my frame delay. So if you want it to go faster, you do a lower number. If you want it to go a little bit slower, do a slower number. So again, make sure it says forever or else your perfectly looping cinemagraph will not loop. This is where you can change your size. Let's see, I think we'll do 900 pixels for that one. That's pretty big. And if you're using this for just things like on Facebook or just for fun or for a little blog post or stuff like that, you can usually go to about 700 pixels and that'll still be a pretty nice quality. So here is the big part when people are trying to save their cinemagraphs and they get stuck. Again, export. You have to do save for web. It will not save as a GIF any other way. So from here, you can see that my GIF is 6.197 megs. Not too bad. First thing, again, check looping. Make sure it says forever. This will tell you how many frames that you have. This is your color table. This is a very important thing. This is going to choose what web save colors um, that it will display on your GIF. You have a maximum of 256 colors. So if you have something with a shit ton of colors, you will probably have to create a custom color table so that you're not gonna get any funky, weird gradient changes and all that weird stuff. But that's a video for another day. Usually, if my file says it's pretty good, I wanna make sure that it's 256 colors. Um, if you have a black and white cinema graph, you can usually get away with like 64 because you don't need but so many grays in there. You can also change to have a very exact number. So if you want something in between like 128 and 256, that's a huge difference in between. Um, so you can, you know, choose 200 or like 175, whatever. So these right here are your color reduction algorithm. I'm gonna be straight up and tell you, I don't actually 
fully know what each of these is specifically for, but I know that if you're getting some really weird like color, dithering looking stuff, um, you can play around with these and this will help you kind of reduce the noise or the pixelation or the graininess or whatever, so. But this is where you can decide on your dither amount. I personally like to keep my dither at 100%. It takes up a lot more room, but it takes care of weird color gradients. So if you say you put this down to, we'll just go to zero and I'll show you. You see those weird patchy parts and the big swaths of color right here? Yeah, you don't want that. That doesn't look nice. So I set mine to 100. That usually takes care of most of that problem. And I usually don't need to mess with this one either. So really what you wanna make sure is your color table is adequate. Uh, your dither is up fairly high. I usually keep mine at adaptive just because I found that that works best for mine. So another thing that you can do, you can change your image size in here if you decide you want it uh, smaller or bigger, whichever. But the best part is this little button right here. You click on that, it's gonna bring up a preview in your browser. So this is what it's gonna look like online. This is especially helpful if like me, you're editing everything on a 13 inch MacBook and you have like no memory and so everything lags. From here you can kind of determine exactly what it's gonna look like online um, when you post it. So, convenient little preview button, love it. Once you're satisfied, hit save. We'll call it steamy with lots of Y's. This is how we used to all text back in 2006 you put like 10 extra letters on the end of anything. Why was that a thing? Why? I don't know. Hit enter and you're done. Excellent job, you have just created a cinema graph. Internet high five. If you have any questions, feel free to message me through the page, message me through YouTube, whatever. I'll try and answer your questions as best as I can. And that's all for today. Gifography out. Cue theme music. I don't have any theme music, but one day I'm I'm really gonna get to that. I swear.